I know the sky must have fallen if I'm back on here doing a video talking about TNA, huh? And I know hell must have really frozen over if I'm going to do a positive video about TNA. But alas, that's exactly what I'm on here to do right now. Can you believe it? It almost feels kind of good and therapeutic in a way. Uh, let's see what the reaction will be to this one. However, I did want to talk about the big news from last week for TNA that Billy Corgan has joined the family as a producer and a member of the creative team. And, you know, I'm sitting there thinking about it. It shouldn't be all that surprising just from a standpoint of when there was talk about TNA last year and what was going to happen to the company. Was the company for sale? Who could be potential new owners? Uh, one of the names that was brought into the fold was Billy Corgan from the Smashing Pumpkins. Here's a guy that's been a longtime wrestling fan that's run his own wrestling company. So in some ways it made some sense. Well, now we find out that Billy Corgan didn't buy the company or anything like that, wasn't part of an ownership group, but he is now a part of TNA as a company. And you know, I think this is something that could potentially be good. This is something that could potentially be helpful or beneficial. It could also be something that is dumb and bad and ends up being a big disaster, as so many things involving TNA over the years kind of have been. But I'm going to take an optimistic look at this. I'm going to be sunny side up about this and give you 10 reasons why I think Billy Corgan could be good for TNA. Um, no particular order, just 10 reasons and why I think him coming to TNA could be a breath of some much needed fresh air in a good way. First, it's somebody outside of TNA. And that's a big thing. In the business world, if you're trying to sit there and change your fortunes and improve your company, and produce better, do you sit there and bring somebody up from within your organizational ranks that has been a part, frankly, of the problem? Or do you go outside and try to bring somebody in with a fresh perspective, a fresh viewpoint, a different way of doing things? If you want to affect positive change, the only way I think to affect positive change is to change the way that you operate and conduct and do your business. And after so many years of sitting there and bringing in you know, people from within TNA's ranks to try and fix the problems. You bring in somebody from the outside of TNA, um, and then that could be a good thing. I'll clarify this more in a little bit. Uh, this is somebody who cares about TNA. Obviously, a guy like Billy Corgan doesn't need this job. He doesn't have to have this job. So that means he wants this job. Obviously, somebody who cares about TNA. That's why he went to work with TNA. Somebody you've mentioned before in terms of a guy that was potentially thought of as maybe a new owner for TNA wrestling. So he's clearly somebody who cares about TNA and he's somebody who clearly cares about wrestling. Again, this is somebody that from Chicago was a fan of the old AWA of Vern Gagne. He grew up on guys like Gagne and Dick the Bruiser and the Crusher and so on and so forth. So this is somebody who isn't just there to try and do something for himself. He isn't just somebody that sits there and looks at this as just a job. This is somebody that clearly loves professional wrestling, respects the art form, cares about the art form, has a passion for the art form. And that's something I think that is incredibly important. This isn't some bringing in some freaking Hollywood writer or Hollywood producer that doesn't understand wrestling, doesn't really care re about wrestling or get wrestling. This is somebody who does care about professional wrestling. He's a longtime fan. He's also somebody I think who understands wrestling, somebody who's actually worked within wrestling for years in his own way, somebody who's been around it long enough to understand what works and what doesn't. You know, in a lot of ways, a fan, and that's ultimately what he is, is a fan of professional wrestling. Uh, importantly, too, I think, and you talk about number five, is somebody who understands the art of the performance. Somebody that understands what it's like to be a performer. Now, certainly he doesn't understand what it's like to be a professional wrestler in the sense of performing on a big stage and the ins and outs of what it takes to put on an effective wrestling match, even doing his own company. He wouldn't necessarily understand that as a full-time wrestler or anything like that. But he is somebody who gets what it's like to perform. He also understands as a musician that no two crowds or audiences are exactly the same. And even if you have a specific format that you must follow, 
that at the same point in time, you must be able to adjust to the crowd, to the audience. You might have one crowd that only wants to hear the old shit, and that's all they ever care about. You might have one crowd that's kind of in between. They like some of the old stuff. They like the new stuff, too. Some crowds just want to hear the new stuff. Some crowds just don't care. They love absolutely everything, so it really doesn't matter. But here's a guy that can speak to some of the wrestlers within TNA from a performance standpoint, and in particular in an art form that, especially when you look at the WWE, it's become so incredibly scripted and structured. He understands that you can have some scripting and have some structure while still having to have flexibility in terms of how you perform and how you appeal to a specific audience. And in terms of being a performer... You know, you're talking about a guy that has performed in front of much larger audiences than the lion's share of the roster on TNA. So from that standpoint, he's somebody that can at least, I think, have some credibility and command some type of respect. Tying back into somebody from outside of TNA, this is also somebody that's not from WWE trying to do it the WWE way. This is not somebody from WCW on a glory kick trying to do it the WCW way. And that's a good thing. Because TNA should be focusing on creating their own identity. And one way to not create your own identity is to bring in people from other companies and have them try to give you a different version of that other company's identity because ultimately it just doesn't work. We saw that with Bruce Pritchard. We saw that with Hogan and Bischoff. We've seen that with Cornette, you know, so on and so forth. So, you know, with Vince Russo, bringing somebody out from WWE or WCW. It's just not worked for TNA in the past. And in this particular case, I think Billy Corgan makes sense because, again, he's not somebody from one of those other companies that has his own preconceptions of the right way to do it or this is really how it should be done. You know, number seven, this is somebody that's different, somebody that's fresh. You know, at a time where we need fresh and different type of people in positions of power within professional wrestling, Billy Corgan is that. You know, he's not Vince Russo, he's not Eric Bischoff, he's not Hulk Hogan, he's not Jeff Jarrett, he's not Jim Cornette, he's not Paul Heyman. You know, he's not this guy, he's not that guy. He's somebody different and somebody that's fresh. And for a company like TNA on their new television home in Destination America in 2015, that's been trying to be at least different and fresh and establish a new identity, having somebody different and fresh in the fold of the creative process is somebody that can come from the outside looking in and now bring some of what he sees to the inside can be very helpful. And, you know, this is also somebody who gets some mainstream attention. Look at the publicity in the press, the free publicity and free press that TNA got for bringing somebody like Billy Corgan into the fold. You know, it doesn't hurt. It never hurts to get that type of attention. You could often say the only type of bad publicity is no publicity at all. Well, in this case, TNA has gotten a lot of publicity and a lot of run out of this and mostly good publicity. All publicity can be good publicity, but this has been really good positive type of publicity, helping to get that TNA name out there. You know, Billy Corgan carries a name with him. He carries a certain level of attention with him. And as you start to build up maybe towards bigger shows, you can sit there and trot out of Billy Corgan to different entities, two different media outlets to help kind of promote your show and thereby as a result you'll get these media outlets to be more engaged and more interested in what TNA is doing more willing to give TNA a chance to where they're not just going to bring in Billy Corgan to talk about a Smashing Pumpkins tour let's say you know number nine this is somebody who understands I think that wrestling is out of touch and by and large the art form at least here in the United States from United States companies is out of touch, I believe. The WWE is most certainly out of touch on so many different levels. Frankly, I think TNA is out of touch on so many different levels. And yes, even an ROH, I think, is out of touch on so many different levels. In terms of trying to expand and appeal to more masses and bring in more people and being culturally relevant, I think wrestling is out of touch and has been out of touch for the most part for over a decade now. You know, so here's somebody that at least acknowledges that, I believe, and understands that and gets it, especially based off of what he's saying. It's not somebody that's trying to protect professional wrestling or sports entertainment by saying everything is great or awesome because I'm involved in it. No, this is a guy that understands the problems, understands the challenges that a company like TNA faces and understands the challenges in front of a business like professional wrestling today. And most of all, lastly, I would say this is somebody who wants to broaden wrestling's appeal by utilizing different types of stories, more culturally and socially relevant types of storylines. This is something that wrestling has really dropped the ball on, in my opinion, in recent years. You know, 
every once in a while you might get one character or one story that kind of fits with the times, but in large part, in a lot of ways, the presentation of professional wrestling, regardless of the company here in the United States, has gotten very stagnant. It's gotten very stale. And part of the way it's gotten out of touch is because wrestling hasn't broadened its appeal. They haven't found a way to effectively be able to connect to today's society. And one of the ways to do that is with socially and culturally relevant stories and characters. And based off of some of the things that I've seen Billy Corgan talk about, it's something that he's looking to at least bring into the fold somewhat in professional wrestling. Now, will every idea work? Will every idea be great? Will every idea be accepted by fans? No, not necessarily. But not everyone needs to. But professional wrestling is behind the times. Professional wrestling, regardless of the company, especially here stateside, is out of touch. And I don't care what company it is. They're all out of touch. And this is a chance here to bring in somebody from the mainstream who also has a passion for professional wrestling, who understands that professional wrestling is out of touch and needs to broaden its appeal. You bring in that type of guy, and hopefully that's what he could do. You know, I'm not going to sit there and say that this is all of a sudden going to make me watch TNA. I think I'm a long way from that. Uh, there are many other issues why I still don't watch TNA. However, this type of move makes me at least optimistic that maybe things, at least from a creative standpoint, could get a little fresher and a little bit better for TNA going forward. The time has come for something to kind of shake up professional wrestling. I'm not saying Billy Corgan is going to be that thing that ultimately shakes up the business, but he could shake up TNA a little bit and hopefully shakes it up for the better. Now, if he comes in and he's still got the network telling him to do this and Dixie telling him to do that, and you've got a bunch of other people that shouldn't be interfering in the creative processes, interfering in the creative processes, then bringing Billy Corgan into TNA was a colossal waste of time and nothing good will be accomplished. And in fact, it will just be more bad heaped on the TNA disaster mountain. Hopefully, Billy Corgan is allowed to do what Billy Corgan has been hired to do, that means he is a very big voice when it comes to the production of the show and in the creative process of the show. Because at this point in time, what's it going to hurt TNA to give him a chance and give him a go and let him run with the ball and see if he can take it? I'm just saying. So I hope Billy Corgan going to TNA is a good thing. And I think for the reasons that I've stated here, that he can be a good thing for TNA. And I ultimately hope that he is.